Shout out to Stephanie Deuce for sending me the story coming out of New York. And here I am thinking I was done with my triple piece for the week. Apparently I am not because this story just got dropped into my lap and it was posted on November 7, 2020 from the New York Post. So here you have this guy whose name is Rabbi Joel Coco. And he just recently passed from the woo woo. But it's actually more to it than him just passing from the woo woo. It's the his past that is the reason why I'm doing this triple P. Apparently, this rabbi who's out of Brooklyn, New York, was accused of molesting multiple children. And if I'm not and if I'm not mistaken, he was actually rather notorious, as in there was constant accusations thrown out about him for years. Years. But let me go ahead and get into it. Rabbi Joel Coco, one of New York City's most notorious accused pedophiles has reportedly died of the woo-woo while in Israel. Now imagine that. He is from here. He wasn't even in the States. He was accused of molesting multiple kids over the years. And he catches one of the most deadliest virus floating around right now. And he didn't even catch it in the establishment that has some of the highest cases. He caught it in a place where we don't even know what their numbers are looking like. Imagine that. He must have thought he could outrun this thing. Coco, age 74, was visiting the country for recent holidays and fell ill with the virus, they said. I heard that he was sick. He was on a ventilator, said Avi Moskowitz. What have I told you about them, them itses? A lawyer for a Brooklyn school where Coco worked with children, Yeshiva Torah Timina, on Ocean Parkway. A notice for a Zoom memorial service announced, we regret to inform you the passing of Rabbi Yehuda Koko. The date of death is not clear. In 2016, the Torah Timina agreed to pay an unprecedented $2.1 million to, form, to two former students who charged that Koko sexually assaulted them. Moskowitz, who does not represent Koko, is now defending Torah Timina against three other pending lawsuits by men who claim the rabbi molested them as kids and that the yeshiva knew of the abuse. The suits were filed under the State's Child's Victim Act, which lifted the statute of limitations for alleged victims to sue. Coco's death complicates the cases, Moskowitz said. You have grown men who claim that 40 or 50 years ago something happened and now the person alleged to have done it is not available. But Neal Mac. Galagbui, I probably completely butchered that name, a Manhattan lawyer who represents plaintiff David Framowitz, another it, said, it won't affect the case at the end of the day. There's little denying Coco did what he did. My client will testify. He added, I'm sure some people think he, as in Coco, has evaded a full measure of justice, but I can tell you this, his epitaph has not been written and is going to be written by his victims. How he will be remembered is by is going to be determined by his victims. The other alleged victims include Baruch Sanhaus and an anonymous John Doe. A strong piece of me will say that the accusations that's coming out about him most likely probably are true. I mean, how many stories have we had or heard over the years when it comes to that church that especially that roman catholic church and them priests messing with these children now i know that he that this is a separate incident right here but i question why was he in israel i know they said he was there visiting or something like that but what was he doing there right now and how long was he there for what was his purpose was he going over there to mess with more children or was he over there trying to escape what was up about to come but either way, you know, the woo-woo is undefeated. It's a global thing. If he left from over here to see if he could escape it, then he made a, a sordid mistake. And it didn't work out in his favor. Of course, now they're going to try to say that the case is going to be hard to prove because he's no longer here to, quote-unquote, defend himself. But if they can dig enough and they can find that evidence, then they really won't need much from him.
And I don't know why it would be so hard to believe. Like I said, it's a history there. But because he's or was a part of the J-ish community, they gonna give this man so much cover. If y'all remember that story I did about those two Amish brothers who molested their sister and one of them got her pregnant and then they gave them the lightest sentence possible and then let them go and then go back to the same house in which she dwelled in, which was a violation of the probation for them not to be anywhere near. See what I mean? I'm like this, if they can go back in history and they can get stuff on Eddie Long, when he was on his deathbed then they should be able to find some stuff about, about this guy but i understand that they don't and why they won't if they choose not to but yeah y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments <laughs> mm -hmm.